Pastor Grass was, was a huge blessing to us. was constantly going. The crops did really well. You look at the sunflowers out there in the field right now, they're gorgeous. It's really been a good year for that. And I don't remember corn this good since we moved up there at least. So I wanna I wanna talk about that a little bit as we as we uh, go into the message today. We're gonna talk a little bit about the blessings of rain. But to begin with, let's just go to the Lord in prayer again. Father, I thank you for this time that we have to come together and to look into your word, to delve into the meanings and and the blessings that are there, Lord, the promises that you make. Father, your word is so important to us. And I just, I pray that you give me the words that you want spoken, that you open our hearts and our ears to hear the things that you want us to know. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so, story of blessings, Leviticus 6, 26 is where we're going to start. He'll get there. Go. All right, Leviticus 6, 26. But I will give you rain in its season. The land shall yield its produce, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. We talk about rain a lot in different things, but um, and what a blessing rain is. When we have a drought, we pray for it all the time. But there's nothing we can do to make it rain. There have been people throughout history that have come up with schemes where they go around and find some place in a drought and they fire cannons up in the air and they seed the clouds and all. God brings the rain. There's nothing else that's going to bring that. But there's a couple of different kinds of rain. When he says rain in season, in, in the Old Testament it talks about this, and this is kind of a Middle, East, Middle Eastern thing in general. In the springtime during planting, they had the first kind of rain. And that first kind of rain was called Malkosh. And Malkosh was what would germinate the seeds and get things going. They had two little rainy seasons here. One was in the springtime, and the second one was later in the year, right before harvest, when the plant needed one more good burst before it finally ripened and finished. And that was called Yura. So rain in season, there are two seasons there. Obviously, if it came out of season, it wouldn't do you any good. If it came too late, it wouldn't do you any good. It had to be at the right time. That timing was important. We have to also have to remember that in the Middle East, rain is their source of water. They have a couple of things like the Jordan River, some things like that, but for the most part, rain is their source of water. We know that Jesus says the man who builds his house on the rock, when the rains come, they got heavy rain certain times of year. And we've talked about that before, some of the Middle Eastern ways of building houses. Zechariah 10.1 said, Ask the Lord for rain in the time of the latter rain. The Lord will make flashing clouds. He will give them showers of rain, grass in the field for everyone. Again, harvest time comes. Last shot of getting pasture grass for rain. <coughs> These things are all the blessings that God brings through rain. And this is typical. Now there are two kinds of rain. Two kinds of rain mentioned in the Bible. The first one is common rain. Okay. Jesus talks about that in Matthew. He says, But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, persecute you, may sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. That's the common rain. And Jesus is using this as an illustration to say, you know what? Treat everyone with the blessing. Because God blesses everyone with the common rain. Don't separate yourself out. Treat your enemies and those who curse you and do good. Treat them kindly because God treats them kindly with the rain. But there's a second kind of rain and that's the one I want to talk of. And that's the rain that comes from the blessings of righteousness. Hosea 10 12 says, Sow for yourselves righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you. That is the Christian outlook on the blessings that we get from God. And talking to people in a dry land, using rain as a blessing message is something that makes sense. It makes sense to us, too, when we talk about rain being a blessing. I remember Harold, this summer we were talking and it was raining a lot. He said, you know... It's always a blessing. There's years when we don't have it. It's always a blessing. There's always something there. It's a blessing for us to have that. All of those things together are illustrations from God about the blessings He wants to give us. 
And there are certain blessings we're going to talk about today, but obviously there's a lot of blessings we can have. And right now I'm going to ask you guys, do you have a blessing? Is there something you feel blessed by right now? Amen. What do you what What do you got here? Or, uh, well, no. What do you What are you blessed with right now, Carl? Carl. The cannabis is up here a few days back, and I got a bad issue of blood, and the doctors can't figure out what's going on. Uh, they thought it was coming from our daughter, and uh, or wherever, or the kidneys, or something that's messed up. So, of course, he took this to the Lord, and uh, the next day she called up. They don't understand it. She just went away. Oh, amen. Praise God. How about anybody else? What other blessings do you have? 70 years ago, yesterday, I accepted Jesus. Oh. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. 70 years Amen. ago. Yes. Years ago. All right. Troy. Family. Family. You had a little going great is a blessing to all of us. When he runs around here, shirt or no shirt, whether it's Green Bay Packers or not, he still blesses all of us except being around here. Joel <clears throat> Paco, yeah. I'm blessed right now with my family too. I'm, Hawkins been a blessing to us his whole life. Yeah. And people will see Hawkins and they'll say, well, you know, that, that that's a, a burden. He's not a burden. He's been a blessing. We were, I was just talking to somebody the other day about the fact that the first neurologist that saw Hawkins said he'd never make it to three years. He's 20 and doing just great. Okay. He, uh, he doesn't talk to most people. He, he doesn't speak the way people normally speak but he lately we've been really blessed because of the new medication we got him on we talked about the the singing and how he gets loud sometimes when he starts vocalizing we were going to the funeral for claudette the other day and he was lighting it up that morning and we're pulling into the parking lot and we said hawken you have to be quiet during the funeral he was until we went back outside the door. We went outside the door and he lit right back up again. He's also a 20-year-old boy that makes his mom and I laugh. We go into a volleyball game this week, playing against Faith. Two years ago, there was a girl from Faith that in warm-ups hit him with the ball. And she came over and she talked to him. and It was, it was really sweet how she treated him. Well, she's still playing. And she's kind of cute. She's tall, kind of cute gal. Every time Faith was on our side of the court where we were sitting, he would just be grinning and grinning and grinning. <laughs> when it switched over, it's not like he doesn't like Dupree, but switched over, he didn't care as much. And then they'd switch over for the next game and he'd be smiling again. <laughs> those kind of blessings, those little things that happen to us in everyday life that we start to kind of recognize are important. We each have those things. Every single day you open your eyes, it's a blessing. Every single breath we take is a blessing. The fact that we have our health right now is a blessing. The fact that if we don't, if we're not healthy, we have doctors is a blessing. <clears throat> the fact that God provides for us in different ways, in different seasons, and in different for different reasons is still a blessing. If you look for it, you'll see it. If you look for blessings, you will see blessings. If you look for something else, you will see something else. Right. It's all on your attitude and how you look at things. Right. And God reminds us of this several times. But the, the point I want, one of the points I want to make here is that we need to store up our blessings. Jane had that song this morning, uh, Showers of Blessings. This is a picture of a Roman aqueduct. All right, this is an underground rain storage that the Romans used in Roman times. And then they would, they would store the rain from all over the city in these reservoirs, many of them underground like this, and then use the aqueducts to bring water back to the city. Because they didn't, they weren't sure they would constantly have a source of water, so they would store it up. The same thing happens in the Middle East all the time. They do not have the ability to just drop a well like we do. They do not sink wells. Instead, what they do is store rainwater. And we read about it in the Bible a lot, and in our English translations, it'll talk about wells being wells. Wells were not necessarily wells. Some of them were cisterns. The rock in the, in the Middle East is primarily limestone, which as a stone is fairly soft. It's easy to carve. And they would carve these giant cisterns in the, in the ground, and in doing that, store the rainwater. 
and use it like a well. Lower a bucket, pull the water out. So when we read in the Old Testament about um, some, of the, some of the early patriarchs talking about wells for their animals or drawing wells to, to impress his, the woman he wants to marry and all those different things, that's probably what they're doing is drawing water out of these cisterns. Pete, these are some pictures from the Holy Land. These are pictures of hand-dug cisterns that they would have. This would be, that's the cover. And we read about that in the Old Testament where they lift the cover off to get to those cisterns. And that's because the water came at a certain time of year, and if you wanted it to last, you kept it. You stored it up. And our blessings in our lives have to be the same way. If you go by a day-to-day-to-day -to -day -to -day basis, there are times when you will not have the same blessings as you have in other days. But if you focus on the day after day after day and not on the totality, you miss the blessings that you've got. And when you store them up, it's amazing what you have. In the Old Testament, the average, the, the houses in Israel had their own cisterns. And the average cistern in those houses uh, would be storing up thousands of gallons of water. 10,000 gallons of water to 50,000 gallons of water per house. There is a cistern that was was carved out of rock in Jordan that, that holds 11 million gallons of water. Think about how much effort it took. One of the reasons the city of Jerusalem was so hard for people to take was because it had a water source. Israel had built a big enough cistern under the city within the walls that during a siege, during a war, if someone attacked them, they were never short of water. And that was a pre-planned thing where they dug those, mm. that cistern specifically for that purpose. It was defensible then. You didn't have a lot of springs popping up anywhere, so they, would, they dug it and stored that up. Mm. That became very, very important mm. throughout history. But it's also something we need to look at ourselves. We need to be storing our blessings. Back up, Pete. We need to be storing our blessings the same way they do here. We think about Mary, we look in the New Testament, and she talks about how she kept these things in her heart. She had these, these, she pondered these things, she kept them. When she went to the, the temple, when she talked to the two elderly people that were there, and they told her, they said she kept them in her heart. These are things she stored up, and she held on to. And she pondered them, she thought about them. Just like having a sister with water that you would take care of. And you would think about it, and you'd want to be filled up, and you'd check the depth, and you'd check the level. When we first moved to South Dakota, we lived in, uh, outside of a little town called Tyndall, and there was no well and there was no rural water on the place we lived on. And there was a small acreage, we had our horses and things like that. And every day, or every week, I would put a tank on the back of the pickup, and I would drive to Tabor, and I would fill up the tank, and I would bring it back because there was a cistern by the house. And I would dump that tank into the cistern, and then the pump in the house would pump it out of there, and we had water in the house and water for the horses, because I hauled that water. That's how that cistern worked. You had to go get it from somewhere else. Without that, we wouldn't have, the house wouldn't have been able to be there. There was no way you could have lived in that place without water, so you had to haul it. You realize in the wintertime how precious that is, when you're trying to haul water and it's below zero, and you've got to go out there and get it and get it off the tank, or get it in the tank and out of the tank before it freezes. You, you realize that. Things are important there. But when we talk about the blessings of God, we need to be seeking those blessings. Not just storing them up, but we need to seek it. Deuteronomy 32, 1 and 2 says, Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the word of my mouth. Let my teaching drop as the rain, my speech dis distill as the dew, as raindrops on the tender herb, as showers on the grass. Let my teaching drop his rain. That's what we need to be seeking. If we want to seek the blessings of God, we need to be seeking his word. We need to be seeking the teachings of God. That's where we're going to get our blessings from. So why don't we seek that? Why don't we go forward? Why don't we look for that? When, we, when it talks about all these different things, the condensation of dew, raindrops on the tender herb, showers on the grass, those are all things that we can receive. We get into the word, we will see that small, gentle. We will see that great showers of blessings. 
who see all these things. But, O oh, hear, hear, O oh, earth, the words of my mouth, let my teachings drop as rain. Let. Let my teachings drop. Mm -hmm. We need to seek it. it doesn't, mm -hmm. It's not going to come to you in some revelation. Mm -hmm. God is not in the, in, the, mm -hmm. in the business of hitting you over the head with hammers saying, hey, are you listening yet? Yeah, there'll be times when he'll prick your conscience. But he wants us to seek him. He created us. He gave us everything we need. He laid it out before us. But we have to seek it. We talked about that in the last couple of weeks about seeking and knocking. We need to be seeking these things. Now Jesus talked about water also. And he talked about it in Matthew. And we know the passage, but I want to talk a little bit about the context here. Um, go ahead and read and put this one up, Eden. We'll read it. John 7, excuse me, not Matthew and John. In John 7, 37 to 38, says, On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow the rivers of living water. Now, that's what it says in our New Testament when we look at that. But if we look into context a little bit, it said, On the last day. Now, this is the Feast of Tabernacles. And in the temple where Jesus was, on the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, they had this huge water display. It was like a pageant. Okay? But it was also a prayer time. Thanking God for the water and the blessings that they've gotten that year and praying for more. So while all this is going on and all the people are there and it's an ooh and ah thing and oh neat and yeah, we'll pray for blessings and all those things, Jesus stands up and he said and, and he cried out. If you thirst, come to me, and I will give you living water. Not occasional, not once in a while, but I'll give you living water. I will give you water that does not ever fail, doesn't ever slow down, doesn't ever stop, doesn't dry up in bad years. If you seek it, if you come to me, if you come to me, I will give it to you. We need to be seeking it. He made that very, very clear here. If you come to me... You will receive. He's talking about the Holy Spirit here. He's talking about the blessings that come from that. And he talks about the concept of us being closer to him through, our, through his blood. We got closer to God. And we have the opportunity to live within his world. His kingdom. Where there's not going to be a drought. Good feet. We also need to recognize the blessing. So Isaiah 55, 10 through 11 says, For there is the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there but water the earth, make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my words be. They go forth from my mouth. I shall, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the things for which I sent it. Again, in this passage in Isaiah, we're getting that comparison. The word and the rain. Rain comes from heaven for a purpose. It does something to the earth. Without it, the earth does not get what it, what it would get. Without rain, it does not have the same thing. It says it comes right down there. And it makes it forth, bring forth in bud and gives seed to the sower, bread to the eater. All of those things are something that, as humans, we're going to rely on the rain to produce the food, to sustain our bodies. But then it says, and so shall my word be. My word is the same thing. It goes forth from my mouth, doesn't return to me void. And then don't kick it out there for no reason. It goes out there for a reason because it's supposed to bear fruit. And it shall prosper for which I sent it. So we need to recognize that the word of God is that blessing. That word of God is like rain. The word of God is what we need to survive. Physically, we need rain. Spiritually, we need the Word of God. In the same way. There is not enough water on the earth that it could not rain for one year. If we shut off the tap for a year and it did not rain on the earth, the earth would, the, the life on earth would fail to exist. We couldn't survive it. Look at things like 
the reservoir in California, Los Angeles, when they had a drought out there, what happened there? I mean, they ration, they go all the way down, and that was just a season that they missed. Imagine an entire year without any rain. What would it look like around here? If nothing would grow because it, we plant seeds and nothing ever germinated. We couldn't possibly go a year without rain. Certain times of year, we couldn't go a couple weeks without rain, without failed crops. Spiritually, we're the same way. We cannot create a desert in ourselves by ignoring the Word of God. If we don't seek the Word of God, if we don't recognize the, the benefit and the blessing and the need for it, there's a song that we sing that comes from a psalm that says, As the deer pant for the water, so my soul reaches out for you. The same thing is necessary. If we want something, if we need something, if we desire something as much as we should desire the Word of God, that will be the true fulfillment. We will satisfy our thirst, as Jesus said. You'll never be thirsty again if that's where you go. But if you don't recognize that that's what it is, you're going to miss it. And how many times in our lives now, if we look around the world, if we look around our own community, we look anywhere, how many times do we have people that are seeking to fulfill a gap in their lives that seek the wrong thing. They have a hole. They have a need that's not fulfilled. And what they look for to fulfill that <clears throat> is earthly, and it fails. I don't care what it is. I don't care if they try and fill it with alcohol or drugs or sex or money. Some of the most miserable people I've ever met are very, very wealthy. Because they focus their whole life on that and realize there's nothing left. You can go to the Bible and see that in Ecclesiastes. Solomon talks about, you know, all, everything's meaningless. Everything on earth is meaningless. It doesn't end up to be anything. Amen. Without God, there's nothing there. And if we don't recognize that that's what we're really looking for and that's what we really need, God lays it all out there and we don't take it. We have never been more blessed than we are right now in this time in history. We have more access to the Word, more access to translations. You can go online and listen to it if you don't want to read. You, can, you, you get to see and hear all sorts of, of exposition on the, on the Word. There are so many different translations. You can look through 20 different translations and find the, let God speak to you through all those things. You can go into concordances. You can go into the Greek and the Hebrew of the original Bible and look at that. We have access to all these things. More so than any other time in history. What a blessing that is. I know you kids don't believe it, but when we were growing up, not only did we not have the internet, we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have nothing. I had a party line. There was three people on our telephone. You picked it up and listened to see if somebody else was talking first before you hung it up. I don't know how we survived, did we? Kids would go out and take off, and you'd say, be home by supper. Now they take off, we say, I want you to call me when you get there. I want you to call me before you leave. I want you to tell me how you're doing. About every 20 minutes, I want to hear from you and make sure you're okay. We didn't have all those things then. Believe it or not, 100% 100, 100 of all school work was done on paper with a pencil. You wrote everything down by hand. Everything. Now they all have computers they walk down the hallway with, and half of their classes are on, online. And they can look up the answers and they can do research and do all those sorts of things. But we can say, take that same technology and that same blessing that we have and use that to seek God. We are people of no excuse whatsoever. There are people still today on this earth. Uh, Jane and I uh, sponsor a couple missionaries and we get uh, Voice of the Martyrs things, th places on this earth where Bibles are not accessible. In any language. We had the Gideon come here and talk not too long ago about what they do in their, in their ministry and their mission is to bring the Word of God to people in their own language. The Wycliffe Bible Translator, same thing. 
They're trying to make it more accessible to those that don't have access. The folks sitting right here in this room, we got no excuse whatsoever. We have more access to it than anyone in the world, any, any time in history ever, we have access to the Word. I like to read a lot of historical fiction and, and read about history and all that kind of stuff. Do you know that in the early churches in Europe, very, very, very few of them had a Bible? They might have a book of the Bible because everything was handwritten. They would have one gospel, and that was it. And nobody could touch it but the priest in the church. So you had no idea whether what he was saying was what God was saying. For sure, you were hoping he was, I guess. Now, if you don't believe what I'm saying, if you don't think this is the actual verse that I took out of the Bible here in Isaiah, pick up your own and look it up. It's right there. You have access. We need to recognize the blessing that that is. And the last thing we need to do is we seek it, we store it up, we recognize it, and now we need to start using it. It does you no good to have an abundance without actually putting it, in, putting it to use. How do we, what's our cisterns here in this country? We all have it. If you raise livestock, you've got cisterns. We call them stock dams. We carve a spot in the earth, a lower spot to hold the rainwater that comes. Hold the rain, the runoff from the snow, the blessings from God, we, we put them in there to hold. And you will not see a West River guy driving around in the spring and won't say, boy, did you see how full the stock dams are out here? Everybody talks about that. That's a, that's a measure. It's a measure of how much rain we have is how much is stored up. But if we didn't turn anything out on there, it'd be worthless. Maybe the ducks would enjoy it, but wouldn't be worth anything else. Luke 6.38 says, Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Give and it will be given to you. God makes this, God makes this very, very clear to us. We are meant to be givers. That is our job in the world. We are to be the light and the salt. We are to be the blessings for the rest of the world. We've talked about that before. If you want to witness to someone, you need to be a blessing and not a curse. Because if you're a curse, they've got no, no desire to have what you have. If you're a blessing, if you, are, if you look like a blessing, if you live in the blessing, if you reflect the blessing of God, everybody's going to want it. And God says, here you go, I'm going to give you everything you need. And the more you give it away, the more I'll give you back. That's our role. We receive. We know we're receiving. When I asked you had blessings, I had a few people say it out loud, but everybody had one they thought of right away. We've all thought of that. We have been blessed. There's a purpose for that blessing. And that purpose for that blessing is for us to give it away. And then he'll fill it up and you can give it away again. And you can continue to give it away and give it away and give it away. We can't outgive God. In addition, Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Very simply here, don't worry about anything because God's going to give it to us. And with thanksgiving, ask for more. Use it. Use the blessings that God has given us and provides for us. If you need help with something, ask. Don't worry about it. Just ask. Again, the, faith of, the simple faith of a farmer. Every spring, you go out and you put seeds in the ground. And you put seeds in the ground with faith that you're going to have something come up and something's going to be harvested. And it's going to be man manifold what you put in. You're going to gain from it. God wants us to have that faith in our own lives the same way. Use it. Don't squirrel it away. Don't hide it. Use it. And when you use it, I'll give you more. These are the things Jesus was talking about in his parable of the servants. He said, hey, good job. 
You doubled what I gave you. Now let me put you in charge of more. Or, oh, you wicked servant. You're so afraid of me, you buried it and hid it and didn't use the blessing I gave you. You didn't use what I gave you to use and said you hid it away. He refers to that as being wicked. Again in Philippians, chapter 4, verse 19, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He will supply all that we need. This Friday we went to a football game in Edgemont, which is on the far end of the earth. It's like fall off, go across the street, you're in Wyoming. It takes a long time to get there. Cooper had it all planned out. Well, here we're going to leave this time, we're going to stop here, we're going to stop here. And initially the stop was McDonald's, and he had this brief flash of brilliance that said no Arby's. Okay, so we stop in Rapid City. The kids can get off the bus. They can stretch. They can eat. All those things. Get ready for this game. Because it's a long, it's a painful thing to take those long trips, get off, and then try and have the emotional drive to do something to get there. <coughs> but there were some, there were some kids that got off that bus that didn't have anything. Some circumstantial. Some just wouldn't have had it no matter what. But we were able to get them food. They were, we were supplied by that. Okay. God will supply all the needs. Nobody goes without. If you go to Him and ask, it's there. But what does He want you to do with it when you have it? Take care of business. Do the things that are necessary. Use it. He'll give you more. Use it. I remember a time in our lives as a young married couple when we would literally be counting change before we went to the grocery store. Anybody remember those days? You count them up and you take something and you write down what you're getting and you try and guess on the taxes and all those other things because you're worried that do I have just enough to get just enough. A lot of young couples go through that. It's a typical thing. Now, we watch the bank account, and there's times when it gets shallow, so we don't deep in, dig into that one because it's shallow, but most of the time, we can go to the grocery store and not have to do that little thing anymore. But if you are a hoarder, if you take those things and you hide them away and you squirrel them away, and you are a miserly person where you don't share that blessing and you don't share it out with anyone else, it's not going to grow. It's going to mold. God wants us to use these blessings. He gave them to us to give away. Velma has always been very faithful and she does some very sweet things, but she sends letters, she sends Bible tracts. <coughs> She'll send out Bible tracts in her letters. <coughs> Anybody think Bible tracts are meant for hiding? They're meant to give away. And she's very faithful in the fact that she spreads the word of God that way. James 1.17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of tuning. turning. In other words, God's the same today as he is tomorrow, as he was yesterday. God has never changed. And God has promised these blessings throughout the Bible. He's promising them to us too. So in the faith that God's blessings will continue, we can live in a realm of blessing. And we can be that blessing because God doesn't change. He's going to keep giving. He's going to keep giving us blessings. He's going to keep giving everything we give away. He gives you more. And we can count on that. Now the last verse here is Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when the heat comes, but its leaves will be green. It will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will it cease from yielding fruit. What I'm saying here in the end is, <clears throat> the Bible illustrates things through rain and through water, through living water, 
through storing up water from wells. All those things are illustrations of God's love for us. They're all illustrations of what's intended. What his intent was from the very beginning was to us to be drawn near to him. Adam walked in the garden of God, and that's what God intended. And we screwed it up. And God says, I want you back. And when you're back, you're back in the garden. You're back again with me. You will receive from me everything you need. If you look into Genesis, it says Adam was told he had to slave, all, or slave and work all the day of his life and dig in the dirt just to live after the fall. God says, rely on me. I'll take care of those things. Do everything I ask you to do, and I'll take care of those things. I'll be that blessing. As it says here, it says, He shall be like a tree planted by the waters. And no matter what happens, if it's hot, if it's dry, all those things happen, the fruit will still be yielding. <coughs> Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are thirsty. I will give you living water. That's what he's talking about right here. That no matter what batters, no matter what storms come, no matter what life throws at you, you will still be green and bearing fruit in the midst of all that. God intends for us to be an oasis in the desert. That's what we're meant to be as Christians. We are meant to be that bright spot when everything else is dying. We're meant to be blessings. And all we have to do is receive it and give it away. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your words today, Lord. I thank you that you illustrate so clearly to us in so many ways, Lord, all the things that you want us to know. Father, I'm personally thankful that I live in an agricultural area where I can look at these things and draw <laughs> straight conclusions to you where it's so blatantly clear. It's so simple. Your love and your provision for us is so clear. 